Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. Today we're looking at one of the most polarizing and hotly debated electric vehicles online. Love it or hate it, the Tesla Cybertruck. Let's go over some of the key specs. This is the Foundation Series, which starts at $100,000 and offers an estimated range of up to 318 miles. Although you can't order the Foundation Series straight from the Tesla website anymore, you can now order the all-wheel drive and Cyber Beast variant. A range extender is an add-on option, but production for this is planned to begin in early 2025. With its dual motor and all-wheel drive capabilities, it accelerates from 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds and boasts a towing capacity of 11,000 pounds. What makes this truck turn heads good or bad is the fact that it breaks away from the traditional truck mold in almost every way possible. Tesla has opted for a completely unconventional approach featuring a stainless steel exoskeleton with sharp angular lines that make it look more like a vehicle from a cyberpunk future than a traditional truck. This design isn't just for show. The stainless steel body is said to be very durable. I'm sure by now you've seen clips of people hitting it and shooting it. It's also only available in one color, stainless steel. It's not uncommon to see people get the Cybertruck wrapped though. The distinctive design also gives the Cybertruck an unmistakable presence on the road. You're not going to mistake this for any other truck out there. However, that same design can be divisive. While some people love the futuristic aesthetic, others find it ugly. If this is your first time seeing a Cybertruck, let's take you around. Spanning across the front is a bar of light, not to be confused with the built-in light bar that's coming soon. This is actually not the headlight for the truck, they're down here in the front bumper. You'll also notice the really large windshield, which of course includes an equally large windshield wiper. Seriously, look at this thing! On the side are the 25-inch Cyber wheels. The rear wheels on this truck are also capable of steering slightly to make it easier to maneuver. On the fender, we have one of the cameras which is responsible for FSD, auto park, blind spot detection, and dash cam features in the truck. You'll also see the foundation wording laser etched into the steel. One thing you'll notice about these doors is that they don't feature any handles. So how do you get inside? Well, you just push the button on the B-pillar and open the door. This is where all the fingerprints will be showcased. This is kind of similar to how you get into the Mustang Mach-E. In typical Tesla fashion, the charging port is hidden from view and exists in the rear fender. Finally, in the back, there's a thinner light bar that extends the width of the truck. When the tailgate is lowered, the two lights on the sides are still exposed, so people will still be able to see you braking if you drive with the tailgate down. While we're back here, let's open this up with the motorized tonneau cover. The bed is 6 by 4 feet and the truck has a maximum payload of 2,500 pounds. Since the truck has adjustable air suspension, you can lower it for easier access while loading items. Setting the air suspension to max gets you 16 inches of ground clearance when in extract mode. The high and angular walls may make reaching into the bed more difficult, particularly from the side. There are tracks here to mount things to and underneath here, a sub trunk. If the truck bed isn't enough, you do have some space in the front. The front has a storage capacity of 7.1 cubic feet. I really like that it's open for flat loading items. You don't have to reach over the front like in the Rivian. However, the front is oddly shaped. It doesn't have very much depth. Our standard blue cooler definitely won't fit, but let's see if we can try. I'm not even gonna try and close this because I know it's gonna fail. Okay, let's see what can actually fit. So I have a small blue bag here, a small suitcase, make sure that's centered, and the charger. Okay, let's try closing it. Okay, it closed so it all fits. Lastly, let's see if it fits in a garage. In an average size garage, this is not gonna fit. Before we move on to the interior, we have to talk about one of the valuable aspects of this truck, its vehicle to load capabilities. The Cybertruck's battery isn't just for driving, it can also serve as a portable power source. With PowerShell, you can use the Cybertruck to power external devices like power tools, appliances, or even an entire campsite. This is perfect for anyone working in construction or for those who love off-grid adventures where reliable power is hard to come by. 
There's outlets in the cabin and bed. In the cabin, you can find two 20 amp, 120 volt outlets, and in the bed, you can find two more. In addition, in the bed, there's a 1450 outlet for powering larger electronics and even other EVs. These outlets in total support up to 9.6 kilowatts of continuous power output. The truck can also be used in emergency as a backup power supply for your home, making it more than just a vehicle, but a lifeline during power outages. The Cybertruck comes with a PowerShare mobile connector. This looks like a regular mobile connector, but it's not. You can also order a PowerShare wall connector. There are some prerequisites in order to get this to work with your home. The vehicle to home capabilities can support up to 11.5 kilowatts of continuous power, more than enough to run a whole home air conditioning system and other full-size electric appliances. Inside, Tesla continues its trend of minimalism and has a huge 18.5-inch touchscreen at the center and a 9.4-inch touchscreen for the rear passengers. I won't go through the entire interface, but know that you're controlling everything from the screen. That also includes shifting gears on the vehicle. The UI should be familiar to Tesla owners, but has a unique Cybertruck design. The buttons on your steering wheel will allow you to engage the turning indicators and engage FSD or autopilot. This truck has amazing tech, so you'll enjoy playing around with all the features the infotainment system has to offer. I understand that minimalism might not be everyone's cup of tea. Traditional truck enthusiasts might miss the tactile feedback of physical buttons and the ruggedness of a more traditional interior. Also, there are only two interior color options to choose from, which include white and tactical gray. The interior is undeniably roomy with ample space for all passengers. In the center console, there's a USB-C port as well as one of the 120 volt outlets. There's a ton of room here for extra accessories. Up in front of the cup holders are two wireless charging pads for your phones. This space down here is a great spot for a bag to go. The glove box also isn't a standard design, but is a slide out drawer for storing items. The seats up front are heated and cooled, so that'll keep you comfortable all year round. The mirror, steering wheel, and giant windshield wiper are heated as well. Just a quick comment, this steering wheel seems really small for some reason. I think it's smaller than the one in my Model 3. Not sure why they went with this design, but at least it's not the yoke. The seats in the back fold up and there's a flat load floor adding another layer of practicality, making it easy to carry larger items. There's a lot of legroom back here, so taller passengers will have no issues at all. The center seat is a little smaller, but you could still fit three adults back here. Under the touchscreen, you've got a 120 volt outlet and a USB-C port. Like most EVs, the Cybertruck has its battery under the floor. This gives it a lower center of gravity than most trucks and SUVs. In total, this truck weighs 6,843 pounds, so it's quite heavy. There's an 11.5 kilowatt onboard charger that will be able to charge up the truck overnight. The battery on this truck has a nominal voltage of 700 volts, which is significantly higher than other Tesla vehicles. Tesla is finally starting to embrace the higher voltages that other companies like Hyundai and Lucid operate at. As expected, it's a liquid-cooled lithium-ion pack. Another interesting thing is that this truck runs on a 48-volt low-voltage system, which allows the wires to be thinner for things like door and window controls or the computer systems. It's also been recently announced that on new version 4 superchargers with the version 4 cabinets, the Cybertruck will be able to fast charge up to 500 kilowatts. We won't see that today. Those new charger setups are scheduled to open up in 2025. On this dual motor variant, there's a motor on the front axle and one on the back. In the rear, we've got a permanent magnet synchronous motor and an induction motor in the front, both with fixed gear ratios. Welcome to our one-time segment of Is It Compatible? The game show that no one asked for will showcase three charging adapters that may or may not be compatible with the Cybertruck. Our contestants include the Chatamo adapter, the CCS adapter, and the first generation J1772 adapter. All right, let's bring out our first contestant. The Chatamo adapter was first made available for Model S and X users, and in 2019, the adapter finally became compatible for the Model 3. But will it be compatible with the Cybertruck? And it's not. Sorry, Chatamo, you are becoming more useless. Next up is the CCS adapter. Remember folks, for those that have an older Tesla, you'll need to get a retrofit on your vehicle for this to work. Okay, and the adapter doesn't even fit. Sorry all, you'll have to stick to Nax. The last contestant is the older version of the J1772 adapter. Will it charge? And it's working. Great news, you'll be able to use that adapter that's been sitting on your old Tesla. Well, there you have it folks, you won't see me next time. Let's make note of our odometer. We're at 19,899 miles and we're charged to 100%. We'll check back in after our drive. It looks wide and it feels wide inside. It's just big. 
The Cybertruck is fully steer by wire, making handling impressive. The truck is planted on the road. I found that maneuvering in parking lots is pretty easy. The Cybertruck is fast. It's big and pointy, but it's not sluggish. The instant torque from the electric motors makes acceleration effortless. I appreciate these large windows. The clarity from the front is great, but the view from the back is not good. I can't see anything from the rear view mirror with the tunnel cover closed. There's also some blind spots due to the angular design and these thick pillars. Overall, the visibility isn't great unless you're only looking forward. The cabin isn't the quietest. There's a lot of wind noise coming directly from the front. Also, the motors are powerful, but you can clearly hear them. The regenerative braking system is fabulous. It allows energy conservation. Let off the accelerator and the truck will come to a complete stop. Also, this truck is kind of creaky when you start to accelerate. All right, we've got our truck down to 10% and our odometer is at 20,138 miles. That means we drove only 239 miles. If we were to estimate it down to 0%, we'd get around 263 miles from a full charge. That's significantly shorter than the 318 miles we were expecting. For clarification, that's mostly highway driving at around 70 miles per hour with the tunnel cover closed, moderate climate, and no load. Okay, we'll be hooking up to these version 4 superchargers. These are supposedly only capable of 250 kilowatts, but there have been some videos floating around showing that these can actually go quicker when charging up the Cybertruck. Our charging session started out strong, staying above 250 kilowatts until 26%. We peaked at 255 kilowatts for a few minutes before it started to drop. Our charging curve was steady all the way down to the end. With a battery of this size, I would have expected that it would have sustained higher rates for longer, leading to a quicker charge time. These charging rates look relatively similar to what we can get on our 2018 Long Range Model 3, which is older and has a smaller battery. According to Tesla, the Cybertruck should be able to hit 500 kilowatts of peak charging with the appropriate charger. The true version 4 stations aren't here yet, but at least with this current battery configuration, I don't see it holding that rate for long. Maybe the battery extender is required to hit those rates? Not too sure. In total, our charging time was 40 minutes and it cost $26.66. How'd the Cybertruck do? Pro, it's a Cybertruck, but also con, it's a Cybertruck. Okay, but seriously, the design is up to personal preference. I'll be honest, it's not really my style, but I do appreciate that Tesla's doing something different. You won't mistake it on the road. On the plus side, it's packed with high-tech features and offers vehicle-to-load capabilities, smooth handling for a truck of its size, and powerful regenerative braking. The cabin area is spacious and the motors deliver strong performance. On the downside, the view out the back is blocked when the tunnel cover is closed, and there are some noticeable blind spots. The front design feels a bit awkward and limits storage, and the angular side walls make accessing the bed slightly more inconvenient than it should be. Our mileage was significantly shorter than what was claimed, which was a disappointment. Plus, relying solely on the touchscreen for controls, including a gear shifting, might be frustrating for some. Oh, and if you want some color variety, you'll probably need to get a wrap, since the exterior options are pretty limited. The Cybertruck is bold and different, and definitely pushes boundaries. But whether it's the right truck for you really comes down to what you're looking for. If you don't like the design, don't buy it. If you do, take it for a test drive and make sure to watch our other EV truck reviews for comparison. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our Kai sticker shop. Kai is my dog. And follow us on social media at Kai ZV. That's all for now, and happy charging. Just cruising